This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We got the second part of our deep dive into the Cummins X15 GHG 27 engine. We're going to take a look at the after treatment. We're really going to dig in here. There's a lot of changes, looks different. This is a prototype, right? So it's not the final final, but it's pr uh, the Cummins team says it's pretty close. They're going to uh, point out some of the new features and give us a quick walk around of the after treatment system. So, no, no, so, so I'd like to start out, right? I'm surprised Jim didn't say this earlier. Really, if you think about it, this is exactly the same as what we've got today, just with heaters and additional catalyst volume. All right, so so we, it's been broken apart in the modular sections uh, to re retain serviceability. Um, Jim mentioned uh, different orientations that can be um, <clears throat> added into the chassis. So currently what we've seen is, we've seen understep, um, we've seen um, stacks, at, you know, configurations where we can run stacks, and then we've got other configurations like back of cab and uh, rail, in rail installations. And so, as we as we step through this, of course, you guys have seen the heaters. Um, so this would come from the engine, um, and the orientation of these, uh, we've seen in, in applications, they've been um, sw swapping the SCR around to the other side um, to shorten that ancillary pipe in between the two. Um, so we've essentially got all the same components just broken up. So we've got the DPF, uh, we've got the DOC with a mixer, one single doser, and then uh, we run it back through the heater in front of the SCR. And then of course the SCR, which if you look from the, the rear of it or front of it, uh, you can see has grown uh, in size due to that added catalyst that we need. What I don't think has been mentioned today is based on the fact that we've retained cool EGR um, and we've added the heaters that helps to control the amount of catalyst that had to grow so if we didn't have those items right we'd, we'd have to convert more NOx if we didn't have the cooled EGR um, and then if we didn't have the heaters it wouldn't be as efficient so you'd have to grow that SCR even larger so this is a really good uh, design choice compromise on size um, we found that we can fit this in our field test trucks really well even the understeps um, they've not ran into issues where they need to cut fairings. Um, they've not ran into issues with heat. So right now, we, we've seen that it's fitting very well in the field. Um, any questions on after treatment? The only disclaimer that I was asked to give from Simon was that this is a very early prototype. Um, so you may not see like the perfect uh, manufactured welds and things. Um, and the Someone design might change. Sure. So, <laughs> so the other thing we've done purposely different and continue to think we have the right philosophy is keeping separate cams rather than a lot of our competitors have a boxed solution. Um, I think we spoke about it this morning but basically you've got modular components, you've got a heat component, you've got a DOC component, you've got a DPF component, you've got a mixer component. So if you have any issues with any individual catalyst it's not to take the whole box out and change things. That's been a real big voice from the field is that they like to be able to, if they at end of life want to change out a DPF for the second user or something like that, they can just undo these two V-bands and take that DPF section out. Um, so making it serviceable, modular and those kind of things has been a really loud voice from the field and so we kept it that way for this design even though we've gone to the um, sort of two module, twin module solution. Um, and then yeah, one of the big focuses, um, again as we mentioned this morning, was keeping the pressure drop low. So that's why we have the dual path SCR to make the flow area bigger. It's why you see all of the inlets sculpted, if you could look inside they're even more sculpted inside, to keep airflow um, as smooth as it can be, lowest pressure drop it can be. But we have carried over the technology, um, our proprietary technology on the swirl mixer. So you'll see inside here a mixer where the DEF goes in and then we let DEF decompose all the way through the system. But most of that mixing happens in here in the mixer in the middle. Um, so that's proprietary technology that we have from our mission solutions group um, that we've carried over from the previous product that mixer actually looks almost identical but for a few minor tweaks to go with this system to what we had on the prior product and i wanted to reiterate we only have one injection point for death yeah there's just one death dose of either even though there's two scr catalysts in parallel yeah so we do test up here where we're nice and hot after the heater and doc 
we put death in, you're trying to decompose that into ammonia and water. That all then goes through the system and into this. And yep, yeah, and, and just because we're just because we're showing these configurations, there are more configurations being uh, planned, designed, and, and be manufactured as we approach production. So just because we're showing these, that doesn't mean that these are the only ones we're taking to market. So there's some um, side in, side out, front in, end out, right? So all kinds of different uh, configurations to be flexible um, in all the applications we see. Yeah, we've seen that in some chassis they want to flip the two systems the other way up. As Javid said on a couple of OEMs, they want to switch this round so that it's right here. Um, so this pipe is really short between the two systems. Um, and then they basically have a front out exhaust that lets back under the chassis so that they keep all the temperature loss in the system as low as they can. So yeah, a little bit of variation OEM to OEM. Yep. Um, but the modules themselves all stay the same. That's right. Yep. And then yeah, we've got the heaters integrated into the end housings. Target date for launch? Sorry? Target date for launch? Um, we'll have some volume in calendar year 26. Um, how much that is and to who and those kind of things, still TBD with OEMs. Right, right. Um, as we do with all of our launches, right, we always launch some volume just before the emissions regulation changes. Yes, There'll be some level of sales in 26. And we expect there to be demand with the, you know, with the just the savings alone, cost per mile, you know, right. which you'll see in a minute. It's 